So good evening guys. Kind of an extra video. We are a couple days before race day. This is Thursday evening. I'm here back in this loft compartment we were in last time. With these five experimental pairs and Purple Heart who is the walking wounded down in that bottom compartment. He is doing great. <coughs> Tell you what, when you start out racing and you come from uh, another breed and you start racing, there's a lot of things that are brand new. The experience today was uh, dealing with the clocks. Been uh, struggling with that the last few days, bought the clock. It was an extra that uh, Russell Codd had, had been used, you know, once or twice or something like that. Um... And I should have, I should have not waited kind of to the last minute. I've kind of got, I'm kind of one of those procrastinating people trying not to be that person, but, uh, kind of left it to the last minute about the last week and a half. And then, uh, you know, started setting it up and all that. And I'll tell you what, when you're, when you're doing it for the first time, what a pain in the ass, you know, cause you have to, you know, kind of figure out everything you have to do. And once you figure it out, it's, it's not that hard, but you know, kind of a lot of going back and forth with Bert, our race secretary, as far as getting it set up and figuring out, you know, what more is needed, if anything else is needed, which apparently I had everything, but the, the actual benzene subscription. And I had uh, a lot of help from Camille there at Seagulls. Um, they are top notch. I, I usually actually do most of my business through Foys and Jeds, but they are really top-notch there at Seagulls. Um, but uh, had a lot of help there, and we finally got it squared away this morning, and then this evening went through everything and made sure the clock is working properly and got the pigeons added to the clock and did some tests, and everything is working great now. But... Uh, Definitely a learning experience when you're when you're coming over from a different from a different breed that doesn't use that sort of stuff, you know. Because in rovers, everything very very basic. You know, we just fly our pigeons. That's all we do, um, and the rest of it's pretty simple. Even if you compete, it's just down to the judge. You pay your money. Uh, they show up at your place. They fly them, the judge makes his evaluation, and they move on to the next place. And that and that's all there is to it. Going into racing, a little more complicated and, and certainly more expensive. Um, you know, just to, to race this year, in addition to the twelve hundred dollars it costs, you know, to race here locally, you know, you get another thousand dollars into the clock, you've got the benzene subscription, you've got the chips, you know, so you're up there to twenty five hundred dollars as it is you know so kind of a very very different game and you know you're kind of running around like a chicken with your head cut off trying to figure it out but uh we have that figured out now so we don't have too long we're going to basket saturday evening and the pigeons will be released at the 150 saturday morning at uh, 7 a.m I think mine will go out at 7.30. Uh, they're going to be in the, the B race since they're yearlings. But uh, definitely a, a big a big experience doing that. And as far as the race team goes, there's only five of them left. Um, interestingly enough, three of them, full siblings. Um, the cock who injured himself at uh, Kino. Um, did really well. Sorry for the pause. I've had uh, text messages coming in from the club. Um, yeah, but that bird had, in, had injured himself at Kino and came back. And he, he's in really good condition. You know, you can feel that he hit a wire um, mark on each leg and uh, a mark on the breast that I didn't notice before. There's kind of a small scab there, so he must have had a fairly small cut right there. Doesn't seem to have any uh, 
muscle injury. There may be an indentation in the keel, which is going to be interesting. But he did really well on the last training toss. Seems to have no problems. He's in good condition otherwise. Um, so he's going to go. Um, all the other birds, the Smoky Blue Bar, who's the one I have the highest hopes for, she is in perfect shape. She is buoyant, um, has a complete tail, complete flights. Um, she's in perfect shape. So she should do really well. The Black Black Widow Cock, he's in pretty good shape. Um, he doesn't seem to be molting. He's been through his molt. Um, you know, got a little bit of wear on his primaries near the tips, but other than that, not bad. Um, he was a little heavy, but he's, he's a little more buoyant today. I've cut the feedback a bit. So, I mean, the body weight's coming down a little bit. I think it's going to be right where it needs to be come Sunday. Uh, the blue bar pied, black widow, cock. He's in good shape, but he does have a, a stunt band in his tail that he's had since he was a squab. When he was a squab, there was a... We get freezing fog here, and he was a late hatch. And he got chilled one night, and there's always been a stunt band in his tail from that. But he's done pretty well. The uh, the blue check hen, which she was she was last in the last toss. She was I think came in around dusk. She is unfortunately on her fourth flight, and I think that's why her results are kind of all over the place. She is a full sister to the blue check pied into the smoky blue bar and i think she is actually a pretty good pigeon she did really really well in early tosses but now having that missing flight obviously it hurts a little bit to fly she seems to always come home but she is slower so we're going to see what happens but uh that is it for now until uh basketing i'll probably do a video at uh, basketing if everybody is uh Fine with that. Show the process, how it's done here. Um, I've got my first Sablons up here. I banded. I don't know if you can see those little guys back there. Two blue bars. And all these other pairs are on eggs with the, well, with the exception of the Port Vliet pair. They have been slower. They laid and they hand abandoned the nest. And the cock was driving, but they haven't been down into their, uh, into a box. In fact, there's a different down here into this box, and that's probably why they're not in the box. I guess he's just thinks he needs to occupy. I love these pied different. Sent one of them. He's out of one of these pairs. I sent him to Tom Brasher's little loft on the hill race. But that is it, guys. Little breeding in here. I've got a whole pile of young birds I still need to video. I'm um, banded over 50 so far. I've still got a lot coming up. Um, I'll probably have 150 to 200 by the time the season is over. A lot of people are, you know, they're always in a hurry to get that breeding season done. And I am not one of those guys. I believe that you need enough young birds off each pair to really evaluate them properly. So I am not that guy. So I will... Continue breeding as long as I can, pretty much, probably into September, give them a short break. But uh, that is it, guys. I will hopefully see you on basketing day. If not, certainly on race day. Keep them flying out there, guys.